Hello Python coders. Take a look at this file. It's called rectangle.py and as you can see uh, it's a file that's going to contain some functions about rectangles and it wasn't originally meant to serve as a module. However, it can be imported into other files to serve as a module. Originally, I planned to write this main function here, which you can see, and use some defined functions, area and perimeter, inside the main function. And it works just fine that way. Let's just take a look at these two functions. Here's the area function, and it's a value returning function. So it's going to take the two sides of a rectangle, multiply them together, and return the result, which of course would be the area. Now here's a void function. Void functions don't return a value. Often they print something out, but not necessarily. So this one's called perimeter. So to get the perimeter, we use the perimeter formula, two times the length plus the width. And then we could print that out. We're not returning it. Notice there's no return statement. We're simply going to print out the perimeter here inside of an F string. OK, now how do we use those in main? Well, first of all, we're going to ask the user to enter the rectangle's length and width, which we'll store in S1 and S2. Now, here's where we call the area function. We're calling the value retu returning function right here. We call it by name, and we give it two arguments to work with. These are called the arguments. The actual values that you use when you use the function, that you pass to the function, those are called the arguments. When you define the function, like up here, we call them parameters. But, well, the arguments get passed into the parameters. S1 gets passed into side 1. S2 gets passed into side 2 in the internal use of, of the area function. Now, because it's a value returning function, you've got to catch the value in a variable. Otherwise, there's just no point in running the function at all. So we use an assignment statement to catch the value in a variable called area underscore rect here. Then we can print that out in an F string, as you can see right here, formatted with one decimal place. So that's what we that's the way we have to call the uh, area function because it's a value returning function. Now calling the void function is easier. We, we don't have to catch any return value because there is none. You actually run a value returning function as if it were a statement. This is just like running the print function. You just, you just use the name of the function and give it, once again, you give it the arguments to work with. So that will run this code up here. So. Um, Let's give this a try. I'll just give it a run as it is right now. And then we'll look at the rest of that program because there is a bit more down below to talk about. <clears throat> but here's the way that runs. As you can see, I'm getting prompted for the length. I'll go with uh, 12 and 8 for the width. And I get an area of 96 and a perimeter of 40, which, which of course is the correct answer. Now, let's take a look at down below here. Look at this, what I've got in triple quotes here. We call this, this, let's call this the Dunder's decision down here. We'll call it the Dunder's decision. This is the Dunder's name variable, Dunder's name. We call it Dunder's because there's a double underscore here and a double underscore here. And of course, we've got name there. Well, that's a special variable in Python. Here's, here's another uh, special variable, main, double underscore. So that's main Dunder's. Well, if we're running this as a separate program, if we're running it directly, the name variable is going to be set to main. And so this line here will actually execute the main function. OK, so that's running it as a standalone program. But the Dunder's decision also allows us to import this file from another program to access its functions as if it were a module. So let's just see how we would do that. Here's another program. This one is called Room Info. And uh, let's say we're planning to update a room and you need to know the dimensions of the room so that you could figure out how much it's going to cost you to, uh, uh, for example, get carpeting or possibly to get uh, baseboard to go around the outside of the room. You need to know the perimeter of the room, right? So uh, take a look what we're doing here. We're going to import that other file. So we're going to import rectangle.py, but 
we'll give it an alias REC. And the reason for that is uh, whenever you want to use a function from this other file from rectangle, I have to precede the function name with the name of the module. But it's much easier to precede it with a shorter alias name, which is what we're going to do. So let's take a look at how this one runs. When this one runs, we're going to prompt the user to enter the room length in the room width. And here's how we run the area function from the other file. The area function has to have two to uh, arguments when we run it, but we have to precede the name of the function with rec dot, rec in the dot op operator, rec because that's the alias for our uh, file that we're importing. But once again, it is a value returning function, so we've got to catch it in the, this variable area rect, and then we could print that out in an f string here with one decimal place. And we'll run this in just a minute. Now, to run the perimeter function, we also have to precede it with REC and the dot operator, right? That's, that's going to run the perimeter function from the rectangle file, from the rectangle module, as it were. In this case, we're using rectangle, the rectangle file as a module. Even although it wasn't originally designed, designed to be a module, we're going to use it as a module file. Now, we could even actually run the main function for, but like this, but uh, we're, we're not going to do that. As, as a rule, you don't want to do that. So here, here's the way it breaks down. When a file is executed directly, Python sets the name dunder to be main, and so it runs the main function. If, however, you import the file as a module, like we're doing here, Python sets the name dunder to be the name of the imported file which in this case would be rectangle. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's give this one a run. We haven't run this one yet, so we'll run it right now. And uh, look what we get. Here's what we get. Right away, we get named under is rectangle. That's because we are importing rectangle Right, we're not we're not to running this as a standalone program. We're importing rectangle here, so therefore, the name dunder is set to the name of the imported file, which is rectangle. And now we you can see that main is running inside this file, so we've got to enter our room length. So I'll try 24 and say 18. And uh, we get the area and perimeter uh, appropriate for those values. OK, so why do we get this, though? Normally, you won't get that. Well, I had a little something that I was hiding back there in the rectangle program. And if I scroll it down, you'll see that I added an else block underneath the uh, dunders decision. Normally, you, you don't want to do this, but we wanted just to make a point here. Uh, I, I was kind of hiding it by putting it down the screen a little bit. But as you can see, when we import it, the, the uh, name dunder is set to the name of the file that we imported. So there it is. That's why we get this output here. When we import this file, the name dunder is set to the name of the file, which is rectangle.pi. Okay, I hope hope that makes sense. But really, what it boils down to, as far as uh, your uh, usage of this, is you want to keep this in mind right here. Okay, here's here's the rule to keep in mind. If you run a file directly, Python sets the named under to be main. But if you import it, the named under is set to be the name of the imported file. So we're going to put code like this at the bottom of all our programs from here on in. And if you ever write a program that's got some function definitions in it, even if you didn't plan on using these functions in another file, you actually can if you import it by using the the, uh, the Dunder decision. So I hope that helps you understand that. And we want you to demonstrate that in your Chapter 5 assignment.